Hello, my name is Richard Stovall, and today I'm going to talk about arc fault protection in PV system <clears throat> as they relate to DC components. I am a NABCEP certified PV installation professional and an IREC certified master trainer, and I also do work for the IBTS as a quality assurance inspector for PV installations. First, uh, we're going to talk about what an arc fault is, uh, and then we'll go into the National Electrical Rules that govern arc faults and PV systems. Then go into the available equipment that's on the market and then just uh, wrap things up. So what is an arc fault? Well, <clears throat> an arc fault is a high power discharge of electricity between two or more conductors. This discharge translates into heat which can break down the wire's insulation and possibly trigger an electrical fire. Um, they occur when uh, something happens to interrupt the conductive path between when current is flowing, can be caused by corrosion, uh, damaged conductors, loose terminal connections, etc. Lots of different ways to, to get an arc fault. So the, the, the mechanism for an arc fault within a conductor, a damaged conductor, uh, in an in a undamaged conductor, current flows freely. But as you can see from this image here, uh, once damage occurs to the conductor, uh, it actually limits the conductive path, which can cause the heat to rise. If the heat rises enough, it can actually melt the insulation, melt the conductor. And once there's uh, the conductive path is fully eliminated, fully interrupted, there can be a a spark that occurs when uh, ionization occurs in the air and it produces a plasma uh, and this is uh, made visible through an electric arc. So when you see a little spark bridging the gap between two pieces of metal that is an electric arc. It's very dangerous. <clears throat> DC arc faults can achieve temperatures of over 3000 degrees Celsius. Uh, so really when we talk about arc fault protection in PV systems, it's really about mitigating the potential for fire due to compromised conductive paths within the system. So, what does the National Electric Code have to say about DC arc faults? Prior to 2011, with regards to PV systems, there really was no provision within the NEC that mandated any kind of requirement. However, in 2011, DC arc fault protection first appeared and it was DC circuits over 80 volts on or penetrating a building shall be protected by a listed DC arc fault circuit interrupter with some very specific provisions, right? <clears throat> it shall detect and interrupt the arcing faults. So there are sensors within the, uh, the system that can measure through noise interpretation the fluctuation of current which is uh, symptomatic of arc fault in the circuit, which then can detect and then interrupt the arc faults. And the, inter the interrupting the arc fault usually occurs by removing the load, the load being the inverter. So it uh, disables and disconnects the inverter. Um, so therefore, there's no longer current flowing through the system. And it shall require that the equipment to be, be manually restarted. So once a system gets turned off for an arc fault detection, you have to actually go out to the site, go to the inverter, go to the equipment, identify the, the source, and then manually turn the system back on. And it's also meant to have a enunciator that provides visual indication that an interrupter has an uh, operator. So like a light, flashing light, uh, sometimes there's an alarm as well. 2014 NEC pretty much kept with the same rules except this time instead of saying on a building it's any PV system. So any PV system over 80 volts DC is now required to have arc fault circuit interruption system. So what about available equipment for PV arc fault detection? Hmm, well, you should know that uh, when a new code cycle is released, the requirements are put forth if they rely on new equipment that's not readily available on the market, installers point to this provision within the NEC 90.4 as justification to forego the new requirement. The 90.4 says this code may require new products, constructions, or materials that may not be available at the time the code is adopted. In such an event, the authority having jurisdiction may permit the use of products, constructions, or materials that comply with the most recent previous edition of this code 
adopted by the jurisdiction. So back when the 2011 code was released, there was not enough available products on the market that could meet the requirement. In fact, it was not until August of 2012 that SMA released the first inverters uh, released with integrated AFC, AFCI production. Since then, most inverter manufacturers have released compliant hardware and several external solutions not integrated in the inverter have been made available as well, such as the inverter manufacturers with AFCI, these are just some of them, Fronius, Power One, SMA, Solar Edge, they all have devices that will, will work with, that are, have integrated AFCI. But if for some reason you're using an inverter that does not have it and you really need to check, the manufacturer check the documentation to see if you have it or you don't have it. If you do not have it, you can use external devices like the DC Sunvolt ADU or SolarBoss uh, has a combiner and some other devices. Um, so, they're, so they're out there. So there's really no excuse at this point being two code cycles into it where the requirement for uh, art fault circuit interruption is there from the NEC that you should not provide it in some kind of way. In conclusion, arc faults can cause electrical fires in a PV system which result from damaged conductors or a compromised conductive path. Therefore, the NEC requires arc fault detection and interruption. 2011 introduces a requirement for PV systems on buildings that produce over 80 volts DC. The widespread adoption of this requirement came later as products with AFCI took some time to hit the market. 2014 expanded the requirement to include all PV systems over 80 volts DC, not just the ones on the buildings. There are now multiple inverter manufacturers that provide integrated AFCI products and several that provide external AFCI products that meet the NSC requirements.